Hi guys, welcome to the show. I'm Lisa Agberry, you're here doctor, and I'm so excited about today because we are in, of course, Black Woman's Guide, oops, there's the name, Black Woman's Guide to Beautiful Hair, and we're going to go through the book, and I'm so excited because we're going to start with your mind. So if you have your book, get it ready. If you don't have your book, remember, you can go to Amazon.com, any of the book dot coms and you can go or your local bookstore even your library should have it and, or you can come to my website at lisaackberry.com and I'll send it to you but remember I'm archiving all of these of course this is YouTube so you can get this you can go back let's share with your friends even have your own little book party so here we go we're gonna start with the mind I'm the mind the mind and you know I'm so excited as you can see because really the mind is really the battlefield and I've heard ministers say that and I really believe that in so many ways if you can get it controlled here and the mind, your thoughts, how you think about your hair, and how you think about your regimen, then you got it. You make it hard in your mind and the way you think, and then it's harder to do. Okay, I'm going to read some of this, and this is the opening page and a little intro with the, with the, the, the uh, section on the mind. And by the way, we're going to start go with the mind, start with the mind, and then we're going to, it takes a, you know, a few sessions to get through that. Yeah, and then, oh yeah, we've got some good stuff in here. And then we're going to work with the scalp and then the hair. And you know, we think about the hair, we think, okay, the hair goes first, but really it starts with the mind, as I said. So let me start. You cannot start any program and be successful until you have cleansed your mind. You have to clean it. You must change your mind in order to have better hair. Now, I know this sounds a little strange, but we have to. We have to change the way we think. You are what you think and believe you are. If you think you have, you know, that term we use, bad hair, or good hair. If you believe you have bad hair, you're going to have it and you're going to treat it poorly. You can achieve what you think and believe you can achieve. And we've heard that before from so many wise people. In order to have healthy hair, you need to have healthy thoughts about your hair. You need to get to the root of the problem and change the way you think about your hair and how I mean, your hair and hair care in general. And I'm reading it because it keeps my thoughts all organized, even though I wrote it. I don't have a set to memory how I wrote it, but I'm reading it because I really want you to get it in a concise way. And my editors made sure I stay concise because I tend to get all excited and have run on sentences and, and I just go on and on and on because I'm very passionate, as you know, about this topic here. Start at the beginning. There is, excuse me, start at the beginning. That is whatever your problems are or wherever your problems began, you will find your new beginning. So when you start and you look at where did my problems begin? When did I first feel this way about my hair? When did I start treating it going in with style first, care maybe? Why did I do it? Start there. And then we can start at our new beginning. In this particular section, and this part on the mind, we're going to explore our mind as it relates to our hair, cleansing all of our negative thoughts away and then reconditioning our mind with positive thoughts about our hair. Isn't that exciting? We will look at many aspects of our life and expose how things, relationships, situations, affect the way we feel about our hair. And that does make a difference. And this all determines how we treat our hair. You will see that this treatment of your hair will be reflected in how healthy your hair is, which will ultimately determine how your hair looks. And it's really that simplistic. If we think different, we're going to do different. If we do, do, do if we think negative, if we, and I'm going to talk about what negative is because I know you guys are saying, well, I'm not negative. I'm a very positive person. Well, let's talk about what it is in just a minute. Hold on. 
you will come to know and understand yourself as a person, your hair type, and many causes of hair and scalp problems. This will allow you to gain consciousness about your own hair. And at that very point, a level of awareness will arise within you, which is so crucial. Because a lot of times we walk around and we're just not aware. We're just walking around, we're just doing hair. We're just getting our hair done or we're just doing hair. Really think about it, guys. I'm going to get pretty deep in this one. And at that point of level where, okay, you will be able to freely individualize your needs and not the world's needs because that's important. A lot of times we're doing things, oh, this is what the world says. Whether the world, our world is our personal relationships with people, work, whoever, whomever. For your hair, the world cannot tell you what to do, so you've got to decide that. You could, you're going to freely decide what you want for your hair and not what the world thinks you should have for your hair. Giving your hair the care, attention that is necessary to truly fulfill the hopes, dreams, and goals and desires that you have for your hair and when you and then you will have better hair it's really that simple that's very profound guys we've got to absorb that because until we can do that until we can give our hair the care and attention that is necessary to truly plant those seeds that is going to truly fulfill our hopes dreams and goals and even the things we want, our desires for our hair. Once we do that, we're going to have better hair. Now, understanding how your mind affects your hair. Because, if you know, we're wondering, mind, this is just way too deep. But it's so true. You must first make a the unconscious mind conscious. And oh my goodness, when I was writing this, I was thinking, okay, am I therapizing people? What am I doing? I am not a therapist. But I, I researched, oh my goodness, at that time, when I wrote this book, I was still doing a lot of research in the library. And I went and I got over 25 books on the mind. And it was such a beautiful time. And so guys, bear with me as I uncover what I learned and how I made the connection with hair. So I've done the research for you. So Try to embrace it, guys, okay? So I'm going to read this. It says, you must first make the unconscious mind conscious. Wow. Awakening to the fact that you have hair problems. Stop being in denial. Say out loud that this is not acceptable to me, and I will no longer be in, be in denial or ignore my hair and scalp as if it is going to go away on its own. If the problems are going away on its own, they're not. You have to do something. I will no longer pretend that I have it under control. Saying things like, oh, I cut my bad ends off so my hair could grow. That's not true. You will not rely solely on a stylist. A product, childhood lessons, a dermatologist, or anyone to solve your hair and scalp problems. You can have those assistance from them. Yeah, with your dermatologist, you can definitely, if there's problems or issues with your scalp, let's take, let's use the prescriptions. Think about your stylist. Get her assistance or his assistance. Products, you need hair products, but you're not going to solely rely on those things. You're going to combine them. You're going to sift through. Use what you need. You can and will gain the power to do something about it using this book club and my book and all other sources that are available to you. 
You will take responsibility for what happens to your hair, which will determine how healthy your hair is now and for years to come. After this, it's over. We're not going to worry about my, your hair. My agent said to me one day, she said, you know, you just make it so easy. Years ago, she said that. And I said, no, I am doing what I need to do. I love my hair. I accept my hair. My hair is no longer in control. At one point, I used to talk to her in the mirror and say, what are you doing? You're trying to kill me. I drove myself crazy, but I prayed. I said, Lord, help me. And then I began to stop. Exhale. And then I got it. Prayed. And then it says, okay, Lisa, let's start uncluttering up here. Your hair and scalp problems will only become worse if you don't do something about it right now. Every day you don't, every day you'll have problems. And you may say, well, I don't really have problems. I have great hair. Well, I'm talking about the problems of manageability. When I get up, my hair is not, I don't have fairy knots and I can manage my hair and I don't have to put it in a protective style to make it work. See, so if you think you don't have problems, ask yourself a few of those questions, okay? But then there's some of you who have real problems, some top forms of alopecia that's stemming from scalp damage. And you're thinking it's stress, diet, nerves, um, genetics. And we know that there's some internal follicular issues that are linked to hair loss. But there's also some external things, guys, that we're doing that's causing it. Breakage. Problems when we say, my hair just won't grow. If your hair is growing above that follicle, if it's on the scalp, I don't care how short it is, it's growing. So there's something that you may have developed called short hair syndrome. We need to look at that. And it all stems from our foundation. And our foundation is how we think about our hair, which ultimately determines how we take care or lack of or with our hair. Okay? I told you I was going to get deep on you guys. You're going to say, I can control my hair. You might get up each day and think about your hair problems and become depressed and frustrating, wondering why you are not able to solve them. You may say to yourself, I have tried this or I've tried that and nothing works. It is as if you have a handle on or can control many areas of your life. And this is what happens with women in general. We have that strong woman syndrome. Hey, we're ruling the world. We have these jobs. We are raising kids. We're doing all these things. But then our hair is really our compass. Because if you think about it, once we start having problems with our hair, we start having problems with our job, we have problems with our kids. I'm going to write about that a little bit. But really, we may feel we have control of a lot of things. But we get, we get home at night and we look in the mirror in our hair and we start crying, wondering what's really going on. Why can't I control my hair? And again, many of you have said, I'll weave it, I'll put a protective style on, I'll cover it up. But underneath that, let's see what happens when you do this every day. When you're just showing this hair, when you take dress it for bed properly and you take it down and you wear it every day, okay? If you're not doing that, then do you really have control of your hair? You have to ask yourself because I want you to have this. Some of us are on a roller coaster ride because the hair seems to be healthy and growing one day and then it seems to stop growing and it's breaking off. You are not alone. This is a very real and serious problem among many women, particularly black women, as it relates to our hair. But don't worry. By the end of this book club and book, you're going to say, I can control my hair. Okay, so let's digest that, guys. Thank you so much. When we come back on our next uh, session, we're going to look inside. We're going to look at ourselves inside. We're going to look at some of the negative thoughts. We're going to look at some things like poor hair care, how it's second nature, how we just think that's the way it is. And then we're going to look at our relationship with our hair.
So keep the questions coming. I'm Lisa Ackberry. Thank you so much for letting me come into your world and give you my opinion. I believe that I'm truly blessed to do that. To God be the glory in Jesus. I love you. And I will see you next time right here on Ask the Hair Doctor with our book club, Black Woman's Guide to Beautiful Hair. So get your book, start reading, start studying, start highlighting, and then send me those questions. Thanks a lot, guys, and bless you. Have a wonderful, beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, or night.